Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Not Any Other Day, written by Alt Cipher. Are you quite well, Mr. Gardner? Voxed, his large belly sway before him plopped down next to his human friend. Gardner's mouth twitched in a tiny smile. Yes, Voxed, I'm fine. You do not seem so, Voxed said. In fact, you seem like you did when you accidentally ate that gradilla plate several cycles ago. Do you require medical assistance? No, Voxed, I'm fine. Really, it's, um, it's just today is the 25th. The 25th of what? Of, uh, the 25th of December, Gardner said. Ah, Vox said. So it is. He looked around the room for a moment at the various species gathered here, eating and drinking, ingesting and imbibing, each in its own way. Is this part of your antiquated calendar? Yes, Gardner said, taking a sip of the amber liquid in his glass. Yes, it is. Almost at the end of another year. But today is a little different. It's a holiday. Kind of a big one, actually. Is every day of your human calendar a holiday? Because it seems that way. Gardner looked down at the table and faintly smiled. No, not quite. We do have our fair share, though. Uh, some are secular, some are religious. Some are old and uh, some are new. This one is very old one that they say has changed names and purposes over many centuries. Mostly religious, at least uh, that's how it started. Even non-religious people tend to get on on this one. And this is why you look ill, more or less. This holiday is a big one for going home and seeing your family and friends. Not everyone has family to go to, but there's almost always someone willing to take them in even if it's just one night. There's a lot of peace on earth and goodwill towards men at this time. Gardner said, Ah, so your species must return to their spawning grounds at this time, and since you have not, you are ill. Voxed said, I uh, see now. Thank you for explaining it. No, uh, that's, um, that's not quite it. It, um, I'm not ill. I'm, I'm sad, Gardner said. It happens sometimes around this time of year, too. You start thinking back on the last Christmas. That's what this holiday is called. Christmas. Anyways, you start thinking back about last Christmas, then the one before that, and the one before that, all the way back to as far as you can remember. Christmas as a kid is, uh, well, magical, I guess. For a while you believe in magic and that anything is possible. But then you remember you're a grown-up and you start thinking about those you've lost. How Uncle Leonard won't be pulling coins from behind your ear anymore. How you'll never hear your cousin's Benny laugh again. How Grandma won't be there to make her famous dumplings. You start thinking about how much better it all used to be. You start wondering if you've lost that magical feeling forever. The cure for that is having kids of your own. Then you get to relive that magic all over again through their eyes. You realize that the loss is part of life and that means it's important to really appreciate what you've got while you've got it. But, um, but, but I'm not home this year. This Christmas I'm stuck at the arse end of the universe for work. My family is at home right now, probably just settling in for Christmas dinner. My cousin makes the best stuffing. I bet they've got a 20 pound turkey just about to burst. The kids are all exhausted by now from playing all day and probably not getting near enough sleep last night. And I'm here. Did you not send them a message? Yeah, I sent a recording on the last transport a couple weeks ago. They know I miss them, but it's not the same as me being there, Gardner said. Your entire species has one day per year where the family is the most important thing, 
and you elected to spend it here. Oh, it's not my whole species, Gardner said. Just some of them. I don't even know of half of them. Of course, even the ones that don't really celebrate it know what it is. I thought you said it was an important holiday, Voxed asked. It is in one religion, Gardner said. You humans, Vox said, are so bad at creating religions. I think the problem is we're too good at it, Gardner said. We've got at least half a dozen major ones, and God knows how many smaller ones. Christmas only belongs to one of them, but the rest of them have their own version of some kind of holiday around this time that has a few of the big themes in common. Family. Food. Presents. Presents? Oh yeah, that's a major part of Christmas, especially when you're a kid, Gardner said. We exchange gifts with family and friends. It's the biggest shopping season of the year by far. Some people really go overboard with it. And of course, Santa makes his midnight run. Who? Gardner looked at Vox and felt a pain in his heart. It was then he realized just how far from home he was. He had, of course, seen the charts and knew the measured distance. He had made the trip out here over many long weeks and months aboard the freighter that brought him. But all of that was just a physical distance. A long enough ruler would reach from here to there. But when Vox asked who Santa was, Gardner felt the void between where he was and where he had been as a yawning chasm separating him from the remainder of humanity. It was his emotional distance, far more than a physical one, that caused the pain in his heart. Voxed, Gardner said. Be at my quarters in two hours. Wear something brightly colored. Red and green, if you got it. Bring something you like to eat, but don't get to eat very often. Gardner finished his drink and was out of his chair in a flash. An hour later, his quarters was filled with the smoke of a roasting meat and stewing vegetables. Gardner opened the door to find Vox wearing a faded green hat and a red and grey striped robe. Gardner laughed to see his friend in such a state. Come in, come in, Gardner said. He took the covered dish from Vox and they sat at the tiny table in Gardner's quarters. Gardner had set the table with food that he could manage on such short notice and the room felt a little too warm and a little stuffy. So... Gardner said, beginning to boss around the dishes. This evening, we're going to celebrate Christmas. We'll eat until we burst, tell stories, and then I have a surprise. I managed to dig out seven old films from the Earth database. We're going to watch them after dinner, and you will then be an expert on the human holiday of Christmas. Vox was overwhelmed. His eyes were never alighting on any one thing too long. There were colored glass balls hanging from the ventilation shaft. There were several large candles burning on the table. There were dishes of sweets set close to hand. A strange blend of music drifted through the air from the unseen speaker. And splashed on the wall were three green triangles stacked on top of one another, with the largest at the bottom. Gardner had piped in several fiber optic lines and attached them to the wall. Various patterns and strobe effects caused the lights to cast dancing shadows against the door. This is uh, also very much, he said. W w what kind of films? Gardner smiled and scooped up a giant spoonful of green vegetables onto his plate. Holiday films. First up, I'll introduce you to one of the great philosophers, one Mr. Charles Brown. After that, you'll learn about the talking reindeer named Rudolph. You'll see a story of the Grinch, the story of Frosty, and the story of Santa. You'll experience the story of Ebenezer Scrooge. That was only six, Fox said. You said that we'd be watching seven. Gardner's face slipped and his eyes locked on a far way. Every family, he said, has their own traditions. Some sing carols, some work the soup kitchens, some play football. But every family has their own Christmas traditions that seem strange and foreign to anyone outside the family. My own family is playing out our tradition right now. We gather together and watch a story of a man that embodies the holiday. A very special man who challenges us to be better. A man who reminds us what this day is supposed to be about. Clark, 
Griswold. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.